Welcome to Crypto Cresties. First, I want to thank everyone who has subscribed thus far. You guys are awesome. I am just so humbled by the overflowing support of this community. Like, I really mean it. You guys are amazing. I was kind of blown away by how many people actually watched my first video. So, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, now on to the topic at hand. If you saw my recent co interview alongside Mesmerizing Morphs on the Gecko Pod, and you stayed till the end, then you would, have, you would have seen or heard the discussion about high whites and what the term high white actually means. So when you're new to the gecko community, uh, you initially are a bit overwhelmed with all the morphs, identifying the morphs, and not just the morphs, but the traits within the morphs. That's how I was in the very beginning. And I will say that Foundation Genetics by Little Monsters has been a huge resource for me. So I've learned a lot through them. However, they don't mention anything about the term high white. They do mention full coverage, however, which is an animal whose pattern covers nearly the entire base cover. I'm actually curious if I'm the only one that thought about it the way that I did. And if I am, that is totally okay. Uh, this question is more for new breeders out there. So please leave a comment in the comment section below what you first thought of when you heard the term high white. Um, maybe what you thought of initially and now what you think of when you hear the term high white and what you think it means. So let me tell you a little story. Uh, I got my first crested gecko uh, September of 2022 and I immediately free fell into the hobby uh, just like a flying gecko doing a trust leap into the air. Hence why I have this image on the back of my shirts. I wanted to go to as many expos as possible, and I heard about October Tenley just a little too late that year, so I totally missed out on Tenley of 2022. However, I then heard about Flora Fauna, and so I immediately bought a VIP ticket, booked my hotel room, and decided to drive 13 hours to this amazing conference. You guys, I booked my VIP tickets as soon as they were available and I had the best time at Flora Fauna, and I highly recommend that you go if you haven't been yet, and if you have been, definitely go back. And I will explain how this all ties into high white in just a moment. <laughs> I had heard the term high white before, mostly from flawless crested geckos, because they have a lot of high whites. And to be honest, when I first heard it and saw their geckos, I thought it meant coverage, because they have a lot of full, cream colored geckos and they're beautiful but then I arrive at flora fauna in May and I see my very first Emily Burke crested gecko in person which is this one right here also considered a high white but let me tell you when you see an Emily Burke gecko in person for me it wasn't the coverage that struck me it was how white that white is like paper white snow white I looked at this gecko and I thought, now that's, that's high white. And from then on, to me, nothing was high white unless it was paper white. To me, it became more about the quality of the white and less about the coverage. Also, if you search for the hashtag high white on Instagram, this is what you'll see. For me, what still sticks out the most is that paper white that just pops. With that said, some geckos on here are clearly more just about the coverage and are more of like a creamy white. And then there are some geckos on here I wouldn't consider high white by either coverage or quality, which might just go to show that people are even more confused about what high white actually means. But regardless, this solidified for me my feeling that a true high white animal was a paper white and perhaps Maybe I was also subconsciously appreciating the coverage of that white. 
So looking back, maybe I just decided on my own to redefine what high white meant to me. But the reality was, as a new breeder, I was just generally confused about what the consensus was for the meaning of high white. I had seen the fall as high whites, and I thought, okay, that's a lot of creamy white coverage. But then I felt there was like a higher tier for high white that I hadn't seen until I saw an Emily Burke white. And I definitely appreciate Emily's geckos, but there's like another breeder I really admire as well, um, and that is Chase at Zengex. This high white boy here is Homunculus, um, which I'm excited to say I have the offspring of Homunculus coming to me from yet another Morph Menagerie and AJD Reptiles online auction. Yet, um, this gecko has high coverage, but look how white that white is. Like, it's so white. So anyways, since the gecko pod interview, it seems the general consensus by established breeders is that high white points first to the coverage of the white or the cream of the animal. And then secondly, it may point to how white, as in the quality of white, the animal is. To some, high white only means coverage. And to others, high white means coverage and also the quality of the whiteness. I personally feel a gecko should be described high coverage white, not just high white, if referring to coverage. But I am not here to rewrite the meanings of terms that have been established. So for new breeders out there, high white generally means high coverage of cream or white, or like a full coverage animal. With that said, I mentioned on the gecko pod that I do have a high white gecko from Gabby at Morph Menagerie. I also then stated that high white to me meant only the quality of the white. However, turns out the gecko I have from Gabby is also considered a high white in the traditional terms of coverage. It is a warlock and starscream baby. So warlock comes from Emily Burke out of Reverie and Planchette and starscream is from Morph Menagerie. After Flora Fauna, I was like determined. I needed to get my hands on an Emily Burke line baby. And to have one that had Morph Menagerie lines infused in as well was just like an added bonus for me. I bid on this gecko during one of their auctions, and if you watch this playback, you'll see it is described business, as a high uh, white. Business, uh, yeah. Ideas. Yeah. Uh, anyways, this is going to be a nice high white, super thick lad, starting at 200 bucks. Is anybody in? This guy is super nice. His head structure is crazy. He's phenomenal. Fantastical. It looks just like... It's Emily Burke stuff. It's Emily Burke stuff. It looks just like her stuff. In person, it's even better, but you'll see it when you get it. And this is the beautiful boy right here. Currently at about 16 grams, he is just absolutely stunning. I have decided to name him Cash Bet. And a little trivia tidbit, all of my geckos that I plan to keep as breeders are named after cryptocurrency coins. Cash Bet is actually the name of a cryptocurrency. If, however, I purchase a gecko from another breeder that they've already given a name to, I will keep the name for that gecko as like a nod back to the original breeder. Hey, by the way, if you would like to see the gecko pod episode that I was in, go to episode number 49 at the gecko pod. That sums up this episode, and I hope it helped clear up some confusion for new breeders out there like myself. If I was the only one that felt this way, then I hope it provided some amusement at the very least. So, thank you guys for watching. When I, so, I had, a, I had a conversation the other day I thought was interesting. Tell me. Um, when somebody says high white, what do you, what do you, what's the descriptor of that? To me, that is the, that pattern? the, the amount of white on the sides are like taller. So, it's pattern. Pattern. It's not. So, a, about 50% of people take high white as color of the white is no. paper. No. No. Absolutely, yeah, no. But I'm just telling you, like, weird. 50% of people think that. No, there's, like, cream and there's paper white. Yeah, but and in my mind, and I'm cream. on the same point as you guys. I consider high white to be is more the volume, of the much It's the volume like, of it white on the body. Of the it, could be any, it could be any white. shade of white. Yeah. It shouldn't be, you don't call it high white. A animal that's yellow isn't a no. No. You know, like high white. Yeah. If it's yellow last.
See, it's never too late. Quality of white. No, quality of white is baloney, guys. Love you all. Yes, a hundred. Holy cow! I would say it's pattern too. I say it's the volume of white on the sides. To me, this is a higher white, but I wouldn't say it's like the highest white that we have. I'm talking about the physical height of the white. (laughs) So you're saying this isn't? Have you seen how people market Chihuahua? Where it's like high white, super high white, super super duper high white. Yeah, because there's so much white on the body. Super duper grouper. Pooper. Super pooper.